Hello and welcome to Walk the Talk. I am Shekhar Gupta, and you know what we say in New Delhi that we've seen a tectonic shift in our politics, say from Rahul Gandhi or Sonia Gandhi to Narendra Modi. I am not saying Manmohan Singh deliberately. Similarly, if there is a paradigm shift in our economics. I know it's not a most polite thing to say, but it is from Sen to Bhagwati. Professor Jagdish Bhagwati, welcome Thank to you. Walk the Talk. Thank you you so let much. me get away with that? Absolutely. You, you hit, hit the nail on the head. You did your for once. So <laughs> tell, me, tell, tell me how does it work? How is it a shift from Sen to Bhagwati? It is in two ways because I think the, the, the first revolution occurred in 91 uh, when we had had almost 25 years of counterproductive policies, uh, which had before actually that. before before 91, and then we were then undertaking reforms in that. Uh, at that time, uh, Sen, since you mentioned Sen to Bhagwati, uh, I'll take the cue from that and say that at that time, we, those of us who were for the reforms were clear that the reforms were necessary to enhance and improve economic growth, not as an end in itself, but as a way of pulling people out of poverty. Because it's common sense in a way to say that uh, <clears throat> if you create uh, prosperity, you're more likely to affect poverty by creating jobs and opportunities than if you don't, right? So growth was the key message and the component effect, you know, I mean, how do you generate growth? That's where the reforms came in, you see. So the mindset was different, the objective was growth, and the, com the components was just very important. Had to be things like direct foreign investment, uh, which would bring in new technology, etc. Openness, which would bring in competition, abolition of industrial licensing, and then the like. And unfortunately, at that time, uh, people like my friend Sen were not really into growth because it sounded like it was not a, it was a bourgeois strategy. Right. Uh, it was looked upon as a sort of conservative trickle-down strategy. Did not have intellectual oomph. Oh, it didn't have, exactly, because it seemed like uh, it was identified in their mind with Reagan and Margaret Thatcher and they're like, you, you, People like us were at the, at the dining table uh, enjoying ourselves and some food would trickle down to the dogs and the serfs below. That's a very conservative view and the view which we were taking, and I've always had that view since I was working on poverty, how to reduce it, from my very first job in the Indian Planning Commission in the early 60s, was that this was an active, radical pull-up strategy. It was pulling people out of poverty. And so it was a very different. So it cut. wasn't trickle down; it was pull up. Pull up, exactly. And pull up has happened. And pull up did happen pull afterwards. Up. You see, the jury was still out because it was still a theory. Fortunately, after '91, it it worked, uh, and so we finally had a test because you know, I mean, your theories can be wildly wrong, right. and I think we did finally make an impact on poverty. And I think where I and Professor Sen also differed was that he now belatedly claims that he was always for growth. I, that's news to me. Uh, but if he was for growth, he was certainly not in favor of the components of growth. So you, you have to take your, you know, your own assessment. So you, you would say that the post-91 phase right. did, not, did not have an element of Sen? I would say no. no. Absolutely not. Now, of course, Professor Sen has said that I told Manmohan that I was for growth. Well, I mean, he's not a shy man any more than I am. <laughs> when I believe something, I say it to you, right, right. right? And to the newspapers and so on. Right. I don't say, I told Manmohan, besides I would not call him Manmohan, he's a prime minister, right. and so on. So I think that was a bit of a dodge. Populism caused inflation. Exactly. Rights-based populism right. caused inflation. Right. Inflation killed right. UPA. And so if Professor Sen had been saying, look, rights are good, but please watch it out, you know, please watch out for this. He never says that. Uh, at least he didn't say that at that time. I hope by now we are converging more <laughs> on that issue. Are you? Um, I mean, I saw what, <laughs> what Professor Sen was saying the other day in the Indian Express. Adda. Uh, Adda. Adda yes. And he was saying things about the Enriga scheme, which is the, the uh, employment scheme and generation scheme. And it sounded very much like <laughs> like he was agreeing with me. So I was uh, reacting in a funny way, mischievous way, and I was saying, you know, 
How, how do you spell sand these days? And the answer is B H A G W A T I. I mean, that's a joke, but, but the point is, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad some convergence is taking place. And if I, if he had convinced me by agreeing to argue with me, which he doesn't want to, I, I, could, I could have changed my mind because social, economics is a social science. So, uh, so this came at a time post 2008 yes then obviously we had seen some excesses of capitalism right uh, there was exuberance in the market right uh, markets right uh, greenspan era was getting over right right and that led to this resurgence of socialist thought processes again socialist protective anti globalization yes yes and no i would say there was say. a critical mass of crises yeah, but those, you see, those are financial crises. Now, I mean, if you read my book on the, on, in defense of globalization, I have a separate chapter, two separate chapters, one on international flows of humanity that can be fitted into the framework of trade, foreign investment, etc. And then the other one was on financial crisis, where I'm even more radical sounding <laughs> than many people, you know, after 2008. And so uh, there I feel that what we have, I mean, nobody has a handle on how to handle this, this sort of thing. Because financial flows are in, inherently difficult to handle. And, you know, where do you draw the line? Uh, between, I mean, the debate is still continuing uh, within the United States as to whether, what, what, whether we should have regulation and what kind of regulation. Because the wrong kind of regulation can also backfire. And so that is a continuous debate because and I don't think anybody has a This came around the same time as one of your colleagues, huh. uh, Joe Stiglitz, yes. globalization and its discontents. Yes. Then to Piketty now. And and the connecting link, intellectual link in a way is Sen, Sen and Dres. Uh, well, I mean I in the mean, Indian context. Oh, in the Indian context. Right. But I don't see any connections here at all. The, these are acts of imagination in my view, uh, in the sense that the you take Piketty, I mean, that's a separate issue. Everybody uh, loves they, to quote from it without reading from it. Right? Yeah, from that it. is true. And as I said, I was, while I was working on a lecture at London School of Economics on called Poverty and the Pope, where I approved of the poverty, Pope's refocus attention away from fo on the rich, which would occupy movement and right. Stiglitz, etc., were pushing to focus on the poor, which is what we've always had from the beginning when right. I joined the Planning Commission over 50 years ago. So that is where I approve of the Pope, but where I say the Pope is wrong because he then goes on and buys into all this other stuff, like how you should plan and so on, then I say, after all, before he became the Pope and infallible, he was fallible. And when he was fallible, he was growing up in Argentina, Argentina. and he was exactly <laughs> absorbed, <laughs> learning all the wrong lessons, like, like our chaps are here, right. have, on uh, what to do. So I've he, actually offered... He, he could have made a polo player, a great polo so, player. So in, in, in my LSE lecture, I even offered, since I went to a Jesuit school, St. Xavier's High School, I said, I offered to go to... to to Rome and write a new encyclical <laughs> with the with the Pope, saying how to actually achieve that objective of helping the poor, because well, that that part is very important. And I think it's simply wrong to say that the way to do it is by returning to to the old policies. Because, <laughs> you know, Galbraith once said, I, I greatly admire. Him. He said of Milton Friedman when Milton Friedman was saying, "Do this, do that," which is a lot of reactionary stuff from. Galbraith's perspective. He said the, the problem with Galbraith's uh, with problem with Friedman's Friedman. prescription is that it has been tried. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't work. <laughs> and we've worked with all these crazy ideas before and we, we hurt the poor. Yes. And now we've learned something and therefore we should not just throw but it over. But we keep on doing it. You know, I was very tempted to pick up your three P's, Pope, Poverty and, and Piketty. Piketty. Pope, Pope, <laughs> Piketty and the poor. Yeah, it's, a, it's a nice headline for, for a columnist, or right, not for a book. Right. Uh, but I would, instead of the poor, use my favorite expression, Pope, Piketty and povertyrianism. Right. I think there is a, you see, I also distinguish between populism as an, uh, as an objective, meaning you're for the people. Right. And, and, and after all, if you're a human being, you ought to be for the people, meaning the poor. 
but populism is a technique or is a means, God help you, because that will undermine your objective. And, and so we have to really think through our policies very sensibly. And povertyism is really exploiting the poor by using them as vote banks. Essentially, that's what it degenerates into. Right. And then you know, and the great thing about today is that the poor also are mobilized against wrong kind of populism. I mean, populism is a technique. Right. And they will not just be. I mean, this is one of the great things about whether I and Professor Sand have argued or not argued. Uh, it doesn't matter, but the issues are now before the people, and the people now are supercharged.